untouchable cook fired after upper caste children refused to eat food. In early December, Sunita Devi, a Dalit woman, or a class of people more commonly known outside of India as the untouchables, was hired as a school cook in uh, Sukhinhan Government Secondary School. On her second day at the job, she was fired after 44 out of 66 students refused to eat the food she prepared. The temporary position only paid about $40 a month. Um, R.C. Purohit, chief education officer of uh, Champawat District, stated that Devi was terminated after it was found that the principal of the school had failed to quote unquote follow protocol and did not receive approval prior to her hiring. An interim cook from an upper caste community was hired while the school looks for a permanent replacement. A ubiquitous, it is a ubiquitous belief that food prepared by Dalit cooks is considered impure or polluted by upper caste members. Anita Arya, a local activist, stated to the Hindustan Times, quote, this kind of discrimination will alienate scheduled caste people, so that's lower caste or those who fall outside of the caste system, from the society. Unbelievable. Again, this is a, somewhat like the Islamic version of food being najis or unpure if it's being cooked by unmuslim non-Muslims. But you know, this is actually even worse, arguably, than the Islamic version because in Islamic version, um, all Muslims are like considered pure. Non-Muslims are unpure, and if they touch your food, the food food becomes unpure. But in Indian version, they have unpure people within Hindu within the Hindu. Hinduism itself, like they have pure and unpure within Hindus. It's not like the non-Hindus that are unpure. Like there are certain versions of Hindus that are like just the, if you touch your your food, you can't eat it. It's unbelievable. It's so well, disgusting. Some people argue that Dalits fall outside of Hinduism. Like they're not traditionally, they weren't viewed as Hindus, and that it was only mm. when they became politically expedient that they suddenly became Hindus and started to be integrated into society as Hindus, but there is no true Hindu majority because as other, is, they're treated very differently. You know, it's amazing how one of the most disgusting things about Hinduism is actually one of the most fundamental parts of it. Like if anybody right? ever tells you, yes, if anybody ever tells you that the caste system is not part of Hinduism, like they are so full of shit. Like every time I was like, people told me this and I had to go look it up. I realized that this is actually one of the most ancient parts of Hinduism. It's so, such a fun, like there's Hinduism is so wide, is so uh, um, diversified and there's so many of different traditions that many things are part of Hindus, this branch of Hinduism, not part of that branch of Hinduism. But if there's any practice or any idea that is like such a core part of Hinduism, like it could be like, you know, karma and, you know brahma and stuff like that that's part of the core parts of hinduism and it's this is caste system, the caste system like if this is not hinduism then nothing is hinduism <laughs> you know what i mean it goes and it's pre it predates so many other things in hinduism that people completely consider part of hinduism you know what i mean like it's such a core part of it and it's so the one of the most vile disgusting things that has been taught by any in any religion you know what i mean like no other religion has um heretical bigotry uh you know within woven within within its fabric to such a degree as hinduism ha has right right like oppress like oppre oppressing people and seeing them as less to be such a fundamental part of a religion no other religion has that um, and that they when deserve it because the universe yeah. has dictated that they need to be born low yeah. to do low things, to be mistreated because of things that happened in their past lives. That they, exactly. yeah. And it's, it's actually the justice of the universe being enacted that things are this way. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I was um, reading a really well-written piece about this incident. And this incident caused a lot of media attention in India. Um, so I wanted to make sure we cover it. And I think one thing that they were pointing out in this piece I was reading is that, um, I want to talk about like how this woman was fired. Um, 
And so they, uh, students ha have since refused eating their meals with this temporary replacement. But we found during the inquiry that the principal of the college had failed to follow the norms of the appointment. After this, we canceled the appointment of the Dalit cook unanimously. Um, the norms here reportedly re refer to approval from the state's deputy education officer. Now the whole process, quote, now the whole process will be again conducted and the Dalit cook can apply again. Um, the cast, and then it continues, the castus nature of this incident is blatantly obvious. For one, the children and their parents complied with the resuming the meals from someone who was appointed as the temporary replacement to Debbie. Moreover, institutional casteism has always employed process-related roadblocks to disguise prejudice on paper. So they're just saying, oh, it's just bureaucratic. The, pro the correct processes wasn't followed. But how likely is it that that would have brought attention if these students, like who would have noticed that if these students weren't protesting eating food from this woman? So with the full support of their parents, you're saying exactly. that the backlash from that didn't, didn't prompt this action that you took? Like, what are we born yesterday? Um, it was funny, Mother Earth in the live chat was saying, after this, a Brahmin cook was hired and the based Dalit kids boycotted the food. Okay, I haven't heard about this, but if true, really? that is awesome. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that reported, but I want to believe that's true. <laughs> not that we, not that we encourage people uh, treating anybody badly for being a Brahmin. Okay, but I think they were just trying to make a point. Yeah, I don't want like I, I don't want people to think like anti Dalit behavior could be should be is justified just the just thing to do is respond to that with anti brahmin anti upper caste behavior right caste is just heretical stuff like it's, it should be it, there should be nothing um that is caste based that should that that is justified but i think these kids here were making like i think i still think this is based because they were trying to make a point not that they're I think, okay, not that they're anti Brahmin, right? Or something like that. Yeah. No, thank you for pointing um, that There's out. nothing wrong. At pointing that out. Yeah. I think that's a very important point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nobara is saying this is from uh, Uttar, uh, no, Uttarakhand. Sorry, next to Uttar Pradesh. So, northern India. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Then Nobara is also saying this is a problem even in progressive states like Tamil Nadu. At least, people at least there people are wait working on it. There, North India is lost. Well, I know you're biased because I believe you have Tamil ancestry. So, <laughs> but I think, well, from what I understand, casteism was extremely entrenched in southern India. So therefore, there is a bolder effort to reverse it. Um, it's still I wouldn't say it's lost. Like I wouldn't say North no. India is lost. Like this, this story did get a backlash. So that's a, that's a, that's a positive yes. thing. Yes. In fact, yeah. I was reading. So I, I follow a ton of India, um, English, uh, India social media, um, different sites, and I was reading the comments on news like this, and the com comments were unanimously like, "I can't believe this. What is our country? Right. We should have moved past this. How can people teach this to their children?" Like everything yeah. I was reading, at least in English, was universal rejection. So two things about that. First of all, don't tell us that we always paint India in a negative way because we're highlighting the fact that this got a major backlash, and that's a good. That's such a good thing to show that like there's many people in India are rejecting this, right? Second of all, it's amazing how so many people accuse us of making it seem like this is a bigger deal than it actually is when there is a backlash within India. Like, are all these people who are seeing this in India and seeing this as an outrage, are they all wrong? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like people think like we're just like some a bunch of foreigners who don't understand India and are just like coming out and like trying to make like paint a, you know. We're trying you know, to defame it, India. Defame India. Whereas Indians are fucking <laughs> Indians within India are outraged and they're like, what the hell are we teaching our children? Right. You know what I mean? Like this is an issue indians have with india it's, it's not us that are just yeah anyways originally um, i wasn't thinking we were going to cover this story oh. but i chose to cover it because of how it kept coming up it kept coming yeah. up that people were talking about this and outrage it was so big 
Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, this is a really important comment from Katie. Katie is saying, in school, we had a story about how a package touched by a Dalit was to be cleaned thoroughly to teach us about discrimination. When I learned I was a Dalit, I was like, what the fuck? Wait, they were teaching you that this is a bad thing or that, that it needs to be washed? To teach us about discrimination, to teach you like how to to teach you how to do discrimination, or to teach you that discrimination is bad. Like that's a, like wait, which one was it? Like teach us about discrimination. So that so that's a good thing. Like I don't understand. I think you mean to teach us which one was it, Katie? I need to know. Okay, let's go to the next one. While we uh, Varun is saying. Uh, that is where karma BS comes into the picture. Karma and caste are inextricably related. Yes, true. Oh, okay. So good. So uh, Katie was being told that they told her that this is bad, that this exists. I was, I was in a Catholic school. Oh, so the Catholic school was teaching you about how casteism is bad. Okay, so this is why a lot of <laughs> new fight like, uh, Abrahamic religion because maybe they're pointing out the flaws within the religion. Okay, um, just really quickly, two, uh, um, three more comments. No, we already said this one. Um, Nobara is saying Eastern religions all had caste one way or another. In China, the aristocrats are still in power. Korea, Japan watered down thanks to the US. India is still as strong as ever. Yeah, it's true that other Eastern religions have casteism, but not to the not with the strength and the and the full enforced the level of enforcement of within Hinduism. And not such a fundamental. Yes, but they do have that. But caste system is such a fundamental part of Hinduism. Like, uh, but it, it also pervades Southern Asia in general. Casteism is a part of Christianity yeah. in India. It's a part of every. Islam in India, it's a part of every because of religion. Hinduism. Yeah, but because of Hinduism, Hinduism made that widespread, right? And also, it what made is, it a it, 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 structure. It, it, yeah. And yeah, and it's a, it goes both ways, right? Like Hinduism is a product of its geography, and the cultures within that area are also influenced by Hinduism. So it's a chicken and egg situation. Like it's not like it doesn't go one way, right? Um, this Katie is saying it is also true that Dalits were not considered Hindus. My subcaste has a history of helping the British because Congress and Hindutva groups didn't have any Dalit representation. Yes, I remember talking to you about this. It was very interesting. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.